2017, the Ohio State University joined the Kern Entrepreneurial Engineering Network, known as KEEN, a coalition of engineering programs from across the nation committed to preparing its students with an entrepreneurial mindset. As a KEEN member, we are focused on integrating an entrepreneurial mindset to undergraduate engineering. It's become part of our culture. We believe that an entrepreneurial mindset coupled with engineering skills expressed through collaboration and communication and founded on character is the key to unleashing human potential in order to solve societal problems. Professor David Tomasco is the College of Engineering's Associate Dean for Academic Programs and Student Services. He was part of the team that advocated for our involvement in Keene, and he's currently co-leading the Keene Funded Project. David, I'm thrilled you're on the pod today. Let's talk about engineering entrepreneurs, or should we say, engipreneurs. <laughs> I love that. Thanks for having me. Anytime we get to talk about education, I'm all in. So all of us know what an entrepreneur is, but help our listeners understand what an entrepreneurial mindset is and why it's so important for our students to have. Entrepreneurial mindset is a framework that the Kern Family Foundation and, uh, kind of began as a way of describing what they thought engineers ought to have as they go out into the workforce. And it's really centered around three C's, curiosity, connections, and creating value. And in many ways, instilling an entrepreneurial mindset involves kind of turning engineering education into a process away from a building blocks of here's what I know and trying to get students to think about what are the opportunities for me to make an impact with what I know. It's all about connotation, right? When I think of an entrepreneur like yourself, I think of someone who has started up a company or wants to start up a company. They want to be out on their own, very independent. But, the, but when you think about it, you don't have to have that drive to actually understand and think like an entrepreneur. In fact, many corporations have called it intrapreneurship, right? The entrepreneurial mindset is really capturing that aspect of entrepreneurians, uh, entrepreneurship that is about seeking and finding the opportunity to make an impact, right? And I can do that regardless of the type of job I'm in, and I don't have to be the person in charge, and I don't have to be trying to build a company, but I can do it within my local context if I'm working for a large corporation or, uh, or for myself. So I love this concept of creating value and, and really thinking about engineers and thinking of what is our role in creating impact. And mm -hmm. of course, it's thinking about the value. Um, so if you think about this framework and the keen framework with the three mm -hmm. C's, how have we, we brought that to our classes? So it, it's an ongoing process. And you can imagine that those concepts, they're very broad, right? And so in, individual faculty, uh, are, we, we try to promote this kind of framework and then have faculty kind of be creative with it, right? What we've done so far, and we initiated our, uh, our involvement with Keen back in 2018-19 uh, or so, uh, had, we started with the first year program, the 1181-1182 sequence, and what, we've, what that has turned into is away from a set of lab experiences where you are simply demonstrating here's what electrical engineering might do, be, here's what ISE might be, so on and so forth. It's now more of a project and it, it's presented to the students as here's an opportunity for you to make an impact. How might you approach this problem using uh, the design process, for example, which involves curiosity. It involves having to draw connections to um, uh, everything else you've learned. And most importantly, it's about creating value for others, which is a different way of thinking Rather than the student being here simply to absorb information, it's really kind of empowering students to think about how they can apply information. So I, I'm pretty sure that um, our listeners would have never imagined someone saying engineers, faculty, and curiosity and creativity. But that's really what it is. <laughs> yeah, very much so, very much so. In fact, the other end of the spectrum where we're applying this is in the capstone program where many of the faculty do actually let the students apply creativity. And when you, when you present this framework to a person teaching capstone projects, they look at it and say, yeah, that's what I do. We just, we just haven't called it that, right? And so 
this is the other aspect of the framework that actually is very, very helpful to engineering education is that it gets all the different disciplines speaking a common language around this because our students are going to go out and have to work together anyway. Wouldn't it be nice if they all kind of had a common language upon which they could build? That would be very nice. <laughs> and I love this concept of, of students enter their first contact with engineering, first year engineering, is through the, this framework. And then when they end their journey here at Ohio State in Capstone, which means that they've understood this whole connection of, I have no idea what engineering is, now I understand what creating value. And then as a senior, it's like, oh, I got it. That's the ideal, right? Uh, and, and you and I both know that there's a lot of, of uh, hard work that goes on in between. And in fact, the current aspect of the, of the grant, the current faculty we're trying to work with are actually those middle faculty. We'd like to see them reinforce this all the way through so they can find a way when they're teaching, uh, you know, digital design, digital circuitry design, or they're teaching thermodynamics, classes that are traditionally very hard, you can still talk about curiosity and creating value and connections even in those very hard core engineering courses. I'm sold on this Keen framework. And so since we've become Keen members, what differences have you noticed among our faculty, students, curriculum, and of course, as a data person, how are we actually <laughs> measuring impact? This, this is, it's fascinating. So we are one of the few members of, of, the, found, of the, the network that actually has a, an engineering education department and education research faculty who are uh, actually building tools to be able to do such assessments uh, as you refer to. I, I'd like to, if I, if I can, talk a little bit about one aspect of our current project where we're trying to figure that out. Because honestly, most of the impact that we observe is anecdotal at this point. I can't point to numbers, right? And that's uh, and and I know that you would ask that, and so I'm, it, it's it's a little frustrating, right? Um, so one of the things that we're trying to do is actually trying to measure the impact on students and see if our teaching in this framework has changed the way that a student talks about and expresses their work on engineering problem solving. So we have reintegrated or re-revised and rewritten the rubrics that are used in the OHI slash O hackathon and the makeathon, which are strictly student driven, not classroom activities, right? So the students are kind of free to express themselves in their own way. And we're going to try and measure whether students articulate some of these this 3C language and some of the framework language as we have them present their hack projects. With no requirement to do so, we're going to see if it bubbles up. I fully expect that the first time that we measure this, we're going to get very little. That, that's just the nature of students, right? But over time, if, the, if we really are making an impact on the way a student thinks about their own problem-solving process, they'll start to talk about the idea of creating value in doing what they're doing or the idea that they connected with their, their, their solution among, from among all of the things that they had learned before. So that's what we hope to measure as we, as we go through this project. So you mentioned the current project, and so this is the one titled Extending and Sustaining the EM Ecosystem Through Research, Professional Practice, and the Student Experience. Yes. Okay. And that's the student experience piece that I just described. Okay, and so there's a lot of words in that title. Yes. Um, and so yeah. <laughs> thinking about, I know it only began a few months ago, um, give us a summary of, of all the things you, you are seeking to accomplish with this new project. Sure. So it's really broken in, we, we've, it's really three sub-projects, which is why the title is so long, because it has to <laughs> include all of those. But that student experience piece is what I just spoke about with, with trying to measure student responses out of the hackathon. Um, the other piece, uh, the other big piece, is the education research piece, where we're trying to actually develop assessment instruments that get at the idea of making connections and creating value and curiosity. It turns out, as you might guess, not in engineering education research, but in education research, there's a whole lot of work on curiosity. That's a well-known and well-developed uh, topic, 
And there are already assessments out there, and we're simply adapting them into the engineering education space. There is very little in, in the space of trying to measure how, how students think about creating value and how they do it and how they make connections. So we're actually in the research space uh, developing assessments that we then hope other faculty across the network nationwide will help us validate and help us use so that we can collect that kind of impact data as to, the, as to how the way that people Im, I, implement the three C's in their classroom has an effect on student outcomes. That's project two. Project three is really that other piece that I alluded to earlier about getting back, getting fac more faculty across all the disciplines, trying to integrate the framework into the, the engineering core courses, the places that are the just notorious for being the hard courses that, that have so much homework and so much difficult, uh, difficult material that it really um, is ripe for a bit of rejuvenation, I would say, in the approach to teaching those courses. So that's the third part. We call them professional learning communities where we involve the faculty and we also involve graduate students, allow, especially if they want to become faculty. We do graduate students and postdocs in there. That's why we call them professional learning communities instead of faculty learning communities. So, you know, I can think about with the professional learning communities, um, we have some control because they're in College of Engineering, they're all at Ohio State. But you mentioned something around sharing assessments around the key network and mm -hmm. being able to measure the impact. Yeah. If you think about the difficulties with that, any thoughts? Well, so it, it turns out that there is a well-established, and, and the, the network uh, is about, I want to say, 60 to 70 institutions strong now. And I'll just, uh, you know, for listeners, if, if they want to visit engineeringunleashed.com, which is kind of the home of the network, you can log in and, and download all of these different approaches that faculty have taken. That's our sharing space. That's the, that's the space where all the faculty are saying, are putting things up and saying, Here's what I'm doing. This has to do with creating value in a structural dynamics class. This is what I'm doing to, to show connections in thermodynamics, right? And you can actually go in there and search by your discipline, search by your topic, or search by one of the framework keywords and see other things that people are doing. So it will actually, it, it sounds difficult to get other people to get involved, but it turns out that once you get into the network and you make some, make some friends, we are actually, you know, it, it, it's actually quite easy. We have several of our faculty who are also uh, jointly working with projects led out of Rowan University, out of Bucknell, uh, all over the place. So it, it really is kind of a, they, they, the, the, the foundation fosters the development of this network in a really uh, impactful way on the faculty. So what's interesting is, is that, and, and we know there's more than 60 to 70 engineering colleges in, in, yeah, around yeah. the world. But yet you can have someone who is interested, who's at maybe not necessarily tied into the key network, just engineeringunleashed.com and they have access, which is exactly. wonderful. Exactly. So this entrepreneurial minded learning is could be a nationwide initiative, really. Yes. Yes, absolutely. So it makes so much sense to me. I mean, if you think about when we were undergrads, it was nothing like this. No, that's true. <laughs> You know, I, I've gotten to think, especially as, as I was looking over what we were going to talk about today, I started to realize, you know, if, if, another way of framing engineering education is that you come out, students come out of high school, and they're still used to a very transactional form of education. You do this, I will grade it, and I will, re I will return to you some points or a grade. And then our first year program still has to kind of operate in that way because that's the mindset that students are coming to us in. And then they're trying their best to kind of get them into a different kind of mindset in that first year so that when they get into the second year, we can start really developing foundational tools and knowledge that they have to do in their discipline. You know, like it or not, your students are still going to have to survive differential equations, still going to have to survive, you know, statics and dynamics or, and whatever the disciplines are. But then really, the, I think that the real impact of this mindset is showing up as students get to be seniors and they get to, they start to develop that foundational knowledge and now learn how to apply it. It's the opportunities that, that, that we start to open their eyes to. And so 
I think the real change that we're going to see as a result of, of the network is that students are going to graduate knowing that A, they've got knowledge, B, they, they know how to apply it, but C, they start to see the world as opportunities instead of just tasks and assignments, right? That's, that, to me, is the real value. And furthermore, you'll have not just mechanical engineers coming out thinking that. You'll have electrical engineers, computer scientists, chemicals, material scientists, and they'll all kind of, you know, if, if we do this well and infiltrate it well, you'll have a whole lot of students coming out, and they'll actually make connections with each other much more quickly, and they'll get off, off to a running start in their careers much more quickly. So mine is a little part about learning differential equations for engineers. <laughs> um, I <Okay>. actually <laughs> substitute discrete math. <laughs> I mean, if you really think about this concept, I, I love the three C's of the entrepreneurial mindset for students. You know, curiosity, connections, and of course, creating value. I mean, honestly, I wish we could apply this concept throughout our entire lives of, of all the things that go on. Yeah. So while I asked David to be my guest today, there are so many faculty and staff involved in this movement, and I'm grateful for each of them. The world needs more entrepreneurs, and they might as well be Buckeyes. Thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to seeing all of this play out in real time. Thanks for listening to Ingenuity. Stay up to date on all the amazing innovation and groundbreaking research happening within The Ohio State University College of Engineering by connecting with us on X, Facebook, Instagram and threads at OSU Engineering.